Hello, my name is Ms. Shaw. I'm the teacher in residence here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, where I'm coming to you from the distance learning studio. I'm so excited to talk to you all today about the past and the present. The past is really important for the Marines because they have been around since 1775. In fact, the Marine Corps was actually founded at the beginning of the Revolutionary War. So today we're going to be talking about the history of the United States flag, colonial life, the Revolutionary War era, and we are also going to be talking a lot about artifacts and items from the past. Speaking of artifacts, let's make sure we know exactly what that word means. An artifact is an object or tool that reveals something about the past. And here at the National Museum of the Marine Corps, we have thousands of different artifacts that help us learn about both the history of the Marine Corps as well as the history of the United States. Many of our visitors ask us what our most famous artifact is here at the museum. The answer to that question is pretty easy because this artifact is really, really important to both Marine Corps history and to the design and shape of our museum. So the big secret is our most famous artifact is this flag that was raised by Marines during the Battle of Iwo Jima during World War II. Not only is the flag from this battle our most famous artifact, it is also the reason that our museum is shaped the way it is. Sometimes people think our museum is shaped like a boat or a large hat, but it's actually designed to honor this famous picture of six Marines raising the United States flag atop Mount Suribachi at Iwo Jima. Now that story has me thinking about just how many flags we have here at the museum. I would really like to show you some examples of all the different flags that we have on display. While we are looking at these examples, see if you notice how some of these flags are the same and how they are different. This flag is an example of one of the oldest United States flags ever created. It is important to us here at the Marine Corps Museum because this flag was made only a few years after the Marine Corps was formed during the Revolutionary War. This next flag is from 1847 and is a part of our Defending the New Republic Gallery. This last flag can be found in our Global Expeditionary Force exhibit and is from 1898. Were you able to find any similarities between these three flags? I noticed that all three had similar colors and shapes. Each flag was created using the colors red, white, and blue. I also noticed that each flag has 13 red and white stripes. Each of these stripes represent one of the 13 original colonies that fought together in the Revolutionary War. The last similarity I saw was that each of these flags has a blue rectangle in the top left corner with white stars inside. Now, did you notice any differences between these three flags? Hopefully you noticed that the number of stars on each flag was different. That is because each star on the flag represents one state that is part of the United States. When our country was first created in the past, there were only 13 states. So our first flag had only 13 white stars on it. Over time, our country grew and more states were added to the United States. That meant that more stars needed to be added to our flag. Today, or in the present, our country is much bigger than it was in the past, and the United States is now made up of 50 states. So that means that there are now 50 white stars on our flag. Now that we have had an opportunity to learn a little bit about the National Museum of the Marine Corps and the United States flag, I want to talk to you more about the history of the Marines. Because just like our first flag is from a long time ago in the past, our first Marines were established a long time ago in the past as well. And who better to help me speak about the first Marines than my good friend Ichabod here. Ichabod, come on out and meet my friends. You know what? Ichabod is from a long time ago in the past, and I think he might be a little nervous to meet you all. Do you think you might be able to say hello Ichabod with me to convince him to join us? Ready? Hello, Ichabod. Great, it worked. Thank you so much. You know, being kind is not just a part of being a great friend. It is also an important part of being a good citizen. Ichabod is a Continental Marine from 1775. He would have been one of the first Marine recruits to sign up at Tun Tavern, a place by the water in Philadelphia. Ichabod would have had an important job as a Continental Marine. He would have helped fight for the colony's independence from Great Britain. 
Marines today also have an important job. Not only do they protect all of the citizens here in the United States, but they also help people in need worldwide. For example, if there are natural disasters like an earthquake, tornado, or hurricane, our members of the military bring food and clean water to help people in need. Because protecting the United States citizens and helping people worldwide is such a big job, we have a few different branches of the military that work to make sure that mission gets accomplished. The different branches of the military are the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, the Air Force, and the Marine Corps. So if you know someone in the military, definitely thank them for their service because what they do is very important. And what Ichabod did in 1775 was really important too. Ichabod would have been one of the key people on board a ship because his job was to protect the ship. He would have been one of the lookouts to make sure that the ship stayed safe from enemy boats that might want to harm or attack the ship. Or sometimes Marines even had to worry about their own crew on their ship causing problems with the captain. So Marines had to protect the captain too. This was because life on a ship was really tough. Sometimes you ran out of clean drinking water or food. So people like Ichabod made sure that everybody stayed in line and didn't fight with one another. By protecting these American ships and making sure they safely reached their destination, the first Marines were protecting the 13 colonies. And those 13 colonies, thanks to people like Ichabod, would become the first 13 states in America and would eventually become the United States of America that we know today. Since Ichabod and his fellow Continental Marines were so essential in creating the United States that we know today, I want to point out a couple of the different things he's wearing that help us learn more about his life as a Marine. As a Marine, Ichabod is trained not only to be on a boat, but also to fight on land. That is why Marines are known as amphibious fighters or soldiers of the sea. Just like some amphibians you might have learned about in school, like frogs or salamanders, Marines can move easily from the water to the land. So as an amphibious fighter, Ichabod has many important jobs that he has to be able to do, and some of the artifacts that he is wearing will help him. This hat is actually called a cover in the military, and it's known as a round top cover because it is round like a circle. In fact, if I was to fold this flap down, it would make a perfect circle. But the reason why it is pinned up is because Ichabod would have had to carry lots of items with him, and a big hat would have gotten in his way. Ichabod is also wearing a leather stock, which is a leather cover for his neck. This would help to protect Ichabod's neck during a battle from being cut or injured. Because all of the Marines wore leather stocks like this one, some people would call them leather necks, and this became one of the first nicknames for Marines. If you have the chance to come to our museum, we have a huge area named the Leather Neck Gallery, where you can see planes, helicopters, and tanks, which is a really cool way to represent this nickname for the Marines. Ichabod also has this marine green uniform. And we know that he wore green because all of the Continental Marines wore green. Members of other branches of the military would wear different uniforms that were sometimes different colors. For example, members of the army wore jackets that were blue like this one. This probably looks like a jacket you might see somebody like George Washington wearing from the Revolutionary War era. It's navy blue, with a little bit of red around the collar and red details. But it wouldn't have had too much red because our enemy during the Revolutionary War was the British. The British were also known as the Redcoats because their uniform was mostly red. So it was really important that British soldiers and American military members didn't get mixed up. That is why they all wore different colors. This is really similar to how different sports teams wear different colored uniforms when they play against one another. It helps everyone know whose side you're on. Another cool thing that Ichabod has is this wooden canteen. This canteen kind of looks like a little drum, but it's not for playing music. It actually would have been where Ichabod stored his water. And we all know that drinking lots of water helps people to stay healthy. Although you might be on a ship surrounded by water, it would have been salt water. So you're not actually able to drink it. So having fresh water on a boat was very important. So Ichabod would have used all of these artifacts to do his job and fulfill his mission as a Continental Marine. Next, we're going to take a closer look at some of the uniforms from a long time ago and compare them with some of the uniforms that you would see Marines or soldiers wearing today.
So here we have this marine green uniform that you would have seen during the Revolutionary War. It feels like a pretty itchy, scratchy, and stiff material. That is because it was made out of wool. Wool was a material that was commonly found back in the Revolutionary War era, and it was pretty durable, which means that it is tough to tear or rip. And this is why uniforms were made out of it. Uniforms for Marines today, though, are very different than that wool uniform, because that wool uniform, you can't wash it. So it got pretty stinky, especially since we didn't have indoor plumbing back then. So many Marines were not taking regular baths or showers. But Marines today, they have washable uniforms, which is much better. Their uniforms also look different. They are typically this camouflage pattern. You guys have probably learned about camouflage. It means to try to blend into your surroundings. You may have learned about some animals or insects that use camouflage. I want us to think about what kind of locations around the world somebody might be going to with this sort of brown camouflage. Hopefully you're thinking of places with a lot of sand or dirt, maybe a desert area or a beach. Another kind of camouflage is this green camouflage. This Marine would be headed towards a whole different kind of environment. He or she is probably headed to a forest or someplace with a lot of grass. That would be where they could blend in with their surroundings. Marines today also wear covers, just like this. They are similar to our round top cover in that it is a softer fabric that helps to make sure that the sun stays out of your face and eyes. But in addition to these covers, Marines today also have hard helmets. Because obviously, if you're going to head into battle, you want to use the best kind of technology to keep yourself safe. Wearing a helmet into battle is just like wearing a bike helmet. If you're going to ride on a bicycle, you want the best technology to keep the most important part of your body, your brain, safe. And Marines do the same. So now we have something really exciting for you to see. Staff Sergeant Millis has agreed to speak with us about another type of uniform Marines in the present might wear. This is the dress blues uniform. It's the Marines' most famous uniform. You may not see Marines in uniforms like this at the museum or on base because it's used only for fancy occasions. Staff Sergeant Millis is now going to tell you more about this uniform. Hello everyone. My name is Staff Sergeant Millis and I'm the Staff Non-Commissioned Officer in Charge at the National Museum of the Marine Corps. As Ms. Shaw said, I'm wearing the Dress A uniform, usually called Dress Blues. It's one of our oldest and fanciest uniforms and dates back to the pre-1900s. We wear it for special occasions such as parties, weddings, and even funerals. The stripes on my shoulders indicate that I'm a staff sergeant and the service stripes indicate that I've been in for longer than eight years. Every Marine's medals may vary a little bit depending on where they have been and what they've done in their career. Thank you so much, Staff Sergeant Millis, for telling us more about the Dress Blues uniform, and we appreciate everything you do for us here at the museum. Now that we have talked about the types of uniforms Marines wear, we are now going to look at what Marines carry with them. To do that, we are going to take and look inside one of these. This is called a haversack. A haversack is basically a Marine's tote bag or suitcase. Now I want you to think about if you were going away for a few days. What would you want to pack with you? It would probably be a lot, right? You would probably want a couple pairs of clothes, a toothbrush, maybe some games. The list would be pretty long. Now, what if I told you that if you were a Marine on a ship living in the past, this would be all that you would be allowed to bring and it needed to last you six months or maybe even longer. Now, I don't know about you, but I think it would be so tough to figure out what I would pack. Although it would have been a little bit easier since you might not have owned as many things in the past, there would have still been a lot of items that would be nice to bring with you. So we are going to take a closer look into this haversack to see what Marines in the past would have chosen to pack with them. While we are looking at these artifacts, think about how they might be different from items that we use today. The first item that we're going to talk about is something that we probably think a lot about, food. Food is so important because not only is it tasty, but we also need food and water to survive. Not yet, Ichabod. First, we have to talk about it. This right here is a common food that you would find in any Continental Marine's haversack, or even in a Civil War soldier's haversack. 
This is called ship's biscuit or hardtack. And just like its name sound, it's a really, really hard cracker. It's basically just flour and water baked together for a really long time. And people in the past would make a biscuit like this with only two ingredients because although it might be really hard and not taste too great, it wouldn't spoil or go bad, at least for a couple of years. Some hardtack could last over 10 years. And you wouldn't want to eat hardtack like you would eat a normal cracker. You would probably want to soften it up with water or tea or coffee first, because if you try to take a bite, it could easily crack your tooth. We also have stories of Marines on board ships who would tap their hardtack before they would eat it because there would be little bugs living inside of here and they wouldn't want to eat them too. Now, the next item that I want to show you is this mug. And this mug would have been pretty important to many continental Marines. Although Marines had canteens like the drum canteen that Ichabod had to carry water in, mugs like these could be placed directly on a fire because it was metal instead of wood. When you put a mug of water like this on the fire, it would allow you to boil the water and Marines could make coffee or tea with it, which would be really nice on a cold winter day. But that does take a lot of time because you would have to find wood, start a fire, wait for your water to boil and then cool down a little bit. Now, do we have to do that today to make coffee or tea? No, today we have machines like coffee makers or electric tea kettles that make warm drinks for us a lot faster. Another important item that you would have to carry would probably be a set of these. Now these kind of look like nunchucks, but they are not and they're actually more important. These are candles and they were used as a source of light since during colonial times, we didn't have electricity. So one of the only ways to see in the dark was to light candles. You usually made these candles yourself or traded with somebody to get candles similar to these. These candles would take a pretty long time to make too. You started with one long wick and you would dip it into a big pot of hot wax and pull it up, let it dry, dip it down again, pull it up, let it dry. And you would do that about 30 or 40 times to build up a candle that was about this thickness. And this size candle would probably only burn for about five to six hours. Now, I think that is a lot of work for not that much time to use your candles. Can you think of anything that a Marine today might use for light instead of a candle? Flashlights are used for a couple of different purposes by Marines. Not only do they help Marines see at night, they also help Marines send signals. There can be different color lenses in the flashlight so that I can flash a red light or a green light or a blue light. That could send a message to someone that I'm not able to talk to or communicate with any other way except by light. And I could also flip this light on and off to send further signals to communicate to, which I think is pretty cool. Speaking of cool stuff, I had mentioned earlier that if you were going on a long trip, you might want to bring a game with you. Games from the past are a little bit different than some of the games you would think of today. For example, they had a game like this. This is a ball and cup game. The whole point of this game was to try to get the ball inside of the cup. And what makes this game pretty special is that you probably would have made this game yourself. It would have started off as a large piece of wood that you would have used special tools to whittle down to create this design and shape. And then you would have attached a ball to a string and let the fun begin. While this might seem like fun at first, after a while you might get a little bored with it, so you may change the shape of the design or start over and build a totally new version. What are some of your favorite games to play today? I'm sure they're pretty different than the games from the past because today we have things like computers and video games that provide us with many different ways to have fun. Another thing you might like to do for fun would be to listen to music. Unfortunately, during colonial times, there was no recorded music because again, we didn't have electricity. So if you wanted to listen to music, you either had to play music yourself or find a friend to play music for you, which is why a lot of people would have carried around this penny whistle. And this penny whistle would have been great in your haversack because it doesn't take up too much space. It's really lightweight and it's not going to break because it's made out of metal and it's fun to play. 
But if you've ever played an instrument before, you know that it can wear you out. You can run out of wind really quickly. So it would only be fun to play for maybe a few minutes. If you played for a long time, it would probably be a little bit harder to do. That's why I am so thankful that we have phones, radios, and computers that can play music for me today. Now, earlier, we were also talking about bringing a change of clothes in that suitcase. And we already talked about the clothing that men wore during that time, especially if you were a continental marine. But I wanted to show what ladies might have worn in the past as well. Now, this right here, it looks kind of like a little apron, right? There's a nice pattern in the front, but this was actually a pocket because ladies wore, were only allowed to wear long skirts or dresses during the Revolutionary War era. And so this pocket helped to make sure that you could carry some of your items around with you and free up your hands to do other things that you needed to do. So you probably would have sewed this for yourself or traded with somebody else for this item. And you wouldn't have had a wool jacket like the Marines had either, um, but you probably would have had one of these. And this is a cape. A cape is kind of like a coat. It just doesn't have sleeves. It drapes over your arms and shoulders instead. But this cape is also made out of wool, which means it's pretty itchy. So you probably wore long sleeves under it and you probably would have really only worn it during the winter time. Now there are many other items that you may have found in a colonial caversack from the past, but this is just one look at some of the artifacts from a long time ago. As you continue to learn about the past, I hope you think about why things were different back then and how so many things have changed today. I've had a great time talking with you all and I hope you enjoy continuing to learn about the past and the present. I also hope that you will come visit us here soon at the National Museum of the Marine Corps.